Hi, I'm Patricia Rollinson with Creative Arts Lifestyle, and today we're going to talk about floor cloths. I'm going to share what kind of materials to paint with, um, what, um, how to prep, how to store, all the things about floor cloths, so that if you have some project that you'd like to put on your floor, you'll know how to do it. Um, the number one thing I would recommend is not using a satin varnish. Do you see how you're getting all that glare? Anytime you're going to put something on the floor, light is shining down on it, and it's going to bounce back at you and that means you're not going to be able to see it. This is especially true if you have something that you want to put outside like a stepping stone. Use a matte varnish or um, a dull satin varnish. I could re-varnish this um, and I could use a matte and then that would take that problem away. So floor cloths used to be made from ship's sails which is kind of cool but I don't have a ship and I don't have a sail so I need something else to paint on. Um, you can paint on Rocklon, which is drapery lining fabric, but this is very flimsy and it won't hold up. This is the actual blackout weight Rocklon. The company came out with a really heavy duty craft weight that is like canvas and it doesn't fray um, and it doesn't, um, and it, this is actually laser cut so it's actually square, which is lovely. Um, you can paint on canvas that you buy you know, at the store, but you have to prime it and prep it and it's kind of a pain, but you can. So that's another option, and you can hem it if you would like to. This I don't hem because it comes so nicely finished. And then this is not exactly the right thing I'm talking about, but vinyl, I just wanted a visual for you. Um, vinyl that you flip over, and this is the peel and stick, so you don't use peel and stick. Um, vinyl that you flip over on the back side that doesn't have a pattern and it's not paper backed, that you cut to size works really well because it stays perfectly flat. So that's a really good option um, and it's super durable. You want to make sure there's no pattern on the back and you want to make sure that um, it's not paper backed, then it will work. And it's a little bit tough to cut. You want to use like a big um, wire cutting scissors, um, super heavy or a knife, get your husband to do it. Um, but so those are some of your options. Now why would I use one or the other? If I was doing a floor cloth per se in front of my kitchen sink. Um, I would probably do the, the vinyl, like if I wanted an everyday, you know, Tuscan chicken or something, which I actually have a Tuscan chicken here. But if I wanted an everyday um, floor cloth that I was going to keep down all year long in my entry or whatever, then this is what I would use on the back side. Um, and you could do it on the top side, actually, um, if you don't mind the texture. So the texture might add to it. So like, you know, you could do either, either or. If you're going to do it on top, you want to sand and you want to use a little bit of like... Um, vinegar to cut any kind of residue that is on here. So make sure that you prime and prep well. But the back side, you don't have to do that with. With both kinds of rock lawn, or with um, the rock lawn, you don't have to do anything to prime it. It is ready to go. I prefer painting on the side that's a little bit rougher. Um, the smooth side, I don't know why I don't like it, but I just like the, the rougher side. So there's nothing wrong with either side. If you're going to do canvas, then you would do a couple coats of um, gesso on both sides of it. You want to hem it first so that um, it's flexible. Okay, so I would use Rocklon um, for anything that was going to need storage because um, the canvas doesn't, well, it will roll well unless you hem it. And these materials, if you say put, if you put anything underneath these materials and it's digging into it, like, you know, if you rolled a hem or a crease, and rolled it up and put it in your long-term storage, it's going to keep that crease and then you're going to have to deal with that. So that's problematic. So that's why I don't like anything Anything that's going to need storage. I wouldn't want to hem and I wouldn't want it to be, um, well, I think I just said that. I wouldn't want to hem and it, it can't. You can't roll the vinyl. So Christmas time, Easter time, um, celebration time, summer time, any of those kinds of seasonal things, that's what I would use this for. Um, and then it comes in a roll, and actually I'm going to skip one more thought back, sorry. Um, how do you keep it flat and how do you keep it in place? There's this wonderful product that's called a bartender's cloth, and it actually it's probably um, the non-stick rug or the non-slide rug cloths that you can get. Either of those products would be great. You cut it the size up, you lay it down, the two things kind of stick together. Um, that works really, really well. If you have ceramic tile, um, a lot of you that live in the southwest have tile floors everywhere, you could put a little square of nonstick tape, and I've done that on carpet, um, and then just 
glue it down or tape it down and it will stay in place as long as you do all four corners. <clears throat> so that's how you keep it in place. Now how do you get it flat after it's rolled up? Obviously I'm not, like this isn't going to stay flat. So what I would do is I take out my handy dandy blow dryer and I blow dry. So you're just going to heat it up. I generally tend to heat it on the opposite side of the roll. So I wouldn't heat it up under, I would heat it up over. And I just run my blow dryer along. It's very noisy and very irritating. And then I let it, I just lay it, lay it face down over on my floor and let it cool down all the way. And generally speaking, that will do it. If you get a stubborn corner like this, I just blow dry it a little bit extra. And then sometimes I need to form it backwards and then that will help. And with um, banners, which is what I paint with the regular Rocklon, I do that a lot. I'll warm it with my hands and that will take the crease right out, especially when it has some paint to, to buffer it. Okay, I wanna talk about sizes next. The most common size is um, two by three. I don't know why, it's the size that fits in your kitchen, it's a workstation size, it's a entry, um, it's door sized, you know, the width of it and stuff. You can paint on them long and skinny, so it's hallway sized. Um, you can get longer pieces and you can make them into runners for your hallway. So now I wanna talk about patterns and sizing. Okay, so to get your pattern, you can paint like any tray pattern or any pattern or design um, on your floor cloth. You just need to blow it up. So what I've got here is a whole bunch of scales. I use the um, setting on my printer to print it out so that it would, um, I don't have it taped together very, very well, um, so that it would print it out with all the different pieces in the right order, and then you just tape it together. Okay, so this is the pattern that I'm going to do. Um, so the way you resize things is you go and get you a handy dandy, and we've got these on our website, um, sizing dial. And you are going to take the number, okay, so this outer wheel, this is, okay, so this is the size of the original, and then this is your reproduction size. So say I have a 10 inch, um, 10 inch wide pattern. So I'll go find 10 inches on the size of my original, which is right here. And then say I want it to be two feet wide. I will go and look for 24 inches and I will line up 24 with my 10 inch. And then that tells me exactly how many times I need to increase the size. So I've got to go 250, 240% to increase my pattern to the right thing. When you're doing this, it's important, when you're using your sizing dial, it's important that you use, if you're gonna go this way, it's this dimension on the size you wanna go to, and it's this dimension on the size that you're starting with. Don't measure this way and want it this way, because you'll mess it all up. So you do um, horizontal with horizontal and vertical with vertical. But this isn't, wonderful tool if you do patterns and things like that because then you'll know exactly how big to make your project and you don't have to worry about um, wasting all that ink. Alright, when we're getting ready to put our pattern together, we're going to have our pattern printed out and unfold it and then I love this tracing paper that comes on a roll because it is exactly the size of my floor cloth and I can put it together without any of these taped bits. These tape bits make me nuts when I'm doing a tracing. So I want my tracing on this wonderful um, sheer transfer paper. So I'll just go ahead and trace it. Um, I'll roll it out, trace it, and it'll be exactly the right size. Okay, you've got floor cloths, and one of the problems with floor cloths, if you trace a pattern and you're gonna trace this long skinny band, your hand is gonna warble and it's gonna do all kinds of things. I like to use some tools. So you have a bunch of different kinds of tools that you could use. You can do a T-square and you can get a nice straight edge. You can use an L-square and get a good corner. You can use these flexible um, rulers. Those are great for marking your, um, your, your borders. So a really cool shortcut tool that we have is a compass. So you can take a compass and you can open it up. You'll measure on your pattern or, you know, wherever. Get it set to where you want it, and then you're going to come along here. I'll hold myself down, 
and you're just going to run that along and it's going to make a perfectly straight line. You can open it up to be fairly significantly banded. So I can do my first band, my second band, and even if I had a third band I could do that. And I can make it even all the way around very, very quick. No measuring. I love that part. Additionally, when painting your bands and borders, I like to use a painter's tape that you would just apply to your um, where you want your band and put it on both sides. Make sure you seal it down. And then you would use a dauber. The dauber is going to just put your, your, um, your paint down without bleeding under. These are domed so they don't allow um, the paint to bleed under. And that is how you're easily going to get a perfectly straight, very clean border with little effort and not so much work. Let's talk about upkeep and care and how to finish a painted floor cloth. So you finish painting your design and you're all ready and you're thinking, eek, somebody's going to be walking on my artwork and how is that going to last? Well, rest assured, this project has gone probably for about, about 10 years to trade shows all over the country. I sell my designs and um, it has it, it is fine, like it is completely fine and I was looking closely at it to see this has not even been washed from the last like three trade shows um, and I mean we're talking like you know a lot of feet going across this thing. So the way that you care for a varnished and finished floor cloth is you are going to clean it with just soapy water, warm soapy water and a dry cloth, clean it off okay and then every couple of years you might be feeling like there's been a million puppy paws that have gone across it or whatever. You might feel like you need to add a little bit more. So what you can do is go ahead and clean it and dry it. Then sand it lightly. Wipe off the residue. Um, and by sanding, you do not want to penetrate into the painted area. So be gentle with that. We just want to give it a little tooth. And then you can apply a polyurethane matte varnish. This has got satin on it and it's too glary for the floor. Um, it's fine up on a wall, but it's not right for a floor. So you want to use a matte varnish, and this DuraClear, Dur DuraClear Americana matte varnish is the one to use because this is going to resist water and spills and all of that kind of stuff. You're going to use a foam roller, and that is how you're going to get a nice even coat, nice and big, and it's got a very short nap on it, so it's not going to flop it around and make it too rough. So that's how you're going to apply your varnish. And then if you wanted to, you could apply a coat of the Clapham's um, beeswax over the top. But if you do the wax over the top, you won't be able to re-varnish again later. You'll have to put on more wax. So just make sure that you're sure of which way you want to go for the future. The wax is actually a super duper hard, hard, hard finish. Um, I recommend it for things that are going to take a lot of abuse. And you would not varnish or do anything to the back side of this. Um, nothing with a sheen or a shine or anything like that because you might be sliding and we don't want that. So that's how you're going to um, finish your floor cloth.